Given any two by two matrix, then multiplying two vectors by that matrix produces a function from the plane to itself. But not just any function, it actually produces what's called a linear transformation, which is more or less just a function which preserves scalar multiplication and which takes parallelograms to parallelograms. So in this specific case, we can see the effect of the transformation on the square, which under the transformation just gets mapped to this parallelogram. And this would have happened if the square appeared elsewhere on the screen, just as long as it was the same dimensions. OK, so what we're actually interested in in this video is a certain very interesting property of linear transformations. And that is that there are some vectors which, under the transformation, are nothing but scaled. So for this particular transformation, these two vectors here are simply going to be scaled by the transformation. They, don't, they undergo no rotation whatsoever. So these kinds of vectors are called eigenvectors. And the factor by which they're scaled is called the eigenvalue for those vectors. So let's uh, phrase this uh, uh, phenomenon more generally. We're interested in solving what's called the eigenvalue problem. So given a square matrix, which is n by n, we're interested in finding, for that square matrix, A, um, all n vectors such that when I multiply by that matrix, I just get a scalar multiple of the original vector. So that is that this equation here holds. So when this is the case, when we're given uh, such an x and such a lambda, then we say that lambda is the eigenvalue which corresponds to this eigenvector x. So these two pieces of data come, come in pairs. Uh, and so we're interested in being able to solve for two things, namely what is lambda and what are these vectors x and how to find them. OK, well, let's just go through a bit of, um, a bit of an argument here. Uh, so if we consider this argument on the screen. So we're trying to solve for the x and the lambda on the left-hand side of this equation here, where a is an n by n matrix and x is supposed to be uh, an n vector and lambda is just a number. Well, if this was true, then we could make this true. And then we could also make this true. And you see here, what is this saying? Well, by the way, um, f to get from this equation to here, uh, we just uh, saw that uh, we can actually turn, turn this whole left-hand side into a matrix multiplication, which is just going to be A minus I times lambda, where I is the n by n identity matrix. Okay, So um, this equation up here is exactly the same equation as this one here, um, just where I is the n by n identity matrix. Okay, now when we're given such an equation and we're solving for the x, we want to make uh, just the following observation here. We don't want um, the only x here to be the zero vector here. This is, um, we definitely want uh, to find the non-trivial vectors which satisfy this equation. And that is to say that we want this to be a non-invertible matrix, which is to say that we want the determinant equal to zero. OK, so we know now what at least we're looking for. So if we're given that this is true here on the left-hand side, then surely the determinant should be zero. And actually, this is called the characteristic equation for our, uh, our matrix A. OK, so this is the main equation that's going to help us solve for eigenvalues of uh, a given matrix. So let's just see um, how to use it to find, to solve the eigenvalue problem for our original matrix. OK, so um, in other words, we're going to use this characteristic equation to solve um, the following problem here, which is to find all eigenvalues and all eigenvectors of this matrix here. So according to what we just saw, we have to consider the determinant of this matrix A minus lambda times I, where I is now the 2 by 2 identity matrix. OK, so let's, let's just see how this works here. So this is going to just be our matrix A. So here, 2, 1, 2, 1, uh, 0, 1 minus uh, lambda times 1, 0, 0, 1 here. And you'll be able to see that this is just 2 minus lambda, 1, 0, 1 minus lambda. And here, this is just going to be, because we're dealing with an upper triangular matrix here, this is just going to be multiplying everything along the main diagonal, which is this. OK, so this is the determinant, and we know that this should be equal to 0. So whatever lambda is, it, it, it has to make uh, the characteristic equation 0. All right, uh, so that gives us only two possibilities. We have only two possible lambda. Lambda is equal to 2, or lambda is equal to 1. So these are our two eigenvalues. 
we have now found eigenvalues, and now your question is, well, what are the eigenvectors? And we can now, after finding the eigenvalues, the next step is we can now find the, the eigenvectors here. So how to do that is to just use the, the all the information we have in in the equation defining the eigenvalue problem. So we let's so for a specific eigenvalue, let's take here for instance the eigenvalue equal to one. So let's look at lambda equal to one. So corresponding to lambda equal to one, we want to solve for x bar, which is x y here, such that when I multiply a x by a, I get nothing but lambda times x. That's exactly the equation defining the eigenvalue problem here. That's what would make x an eigenvector for lambda. And here we can just unravel what this means. Well, in our case, we're going to have 2, 1, 0, 1 times x, y is equal to lambda. But now lambda is 1 times x, so we get this. Okay, and here uh, we can just multiply, get 2x plus y, uh, y is just equal to xy. And what, what you have here is nothing but a simultaneous equation where you have 2x plus y uh, equals x, and you have here uh, just y equals y. Okay, so uh, a very simple, um, uh, simultaneous equation which you can solve and you'll be able to easily see here well I just to clearly see one thing y can be absolutely anything so we can let y equal t for t any real number and then uh, the top equation here uh, forces something it forces x to be equal to negative y so that x is equal to negative t and so here we see something here we see something we see that um, x y must be equal to uh, just negative t times t, uh, negative t for the x component and t for the y component. So it's just t times negative one, uh, one. Great, so here you'll see that what we've just calculated is all eigenvectors for, a, um, for this eigenvalue, lambda equal to one. Okay, great, so um, they're all given here. Now, um, uh, let's do the same thing, but for lambda equal to 2. Okay, so for lambda equal to 2, it's actually going to be a little bit uh, simpler because we're again going to solve for x equal to x, y here, um, where our equation ax must be equal to lambda x, which is just going to tell us that 2, 1, 0, 1, times x y is equal to two x y uh, two y because I'm just multiplying the lambda in when lambda is equal to two. Okay, and here uh, again we have um, we can just write out what the simultaneous equation is going to give us. We're going to have two x uh, plus y is equal to two x, and then we're going to get at the bottom just simply y uh, is equal to two y. Okay, so this is going to tell us something. Uh, this equation here is just going to tell us, well, firstly, you can see at the bottom here, uh, you're just going to get y is equal to, to, to 0. But then getting y equal to 0, um, the top equation gives us no other conditions because then we'll just have 2x is equal to x. And so x can be anything, so x is equal to t. So this then tells us exactly what uh, x is, what the form of x is x is just going to be equal to uh, t times 0, uh, t comma 0, sorry. So this is just t uh, 1, 0. Okay, so for the eigenvalue uh, lambda equal to 2, all eigenvectors corresponding to this uh, eigenvalue are just given here. Okay. And here you can already see these two vectors were actually the vectors that already that appeared in our um, uh, initial um, when we were stating the eigenvalue problem. So just to to jump back to that quickly, so negative one one and one zero. Let's see where they appeared. Well, you'll see um, up here now. That's actually these two vectors here. This vector here, you'll see, it's just negative one one, 
and this vector here is just one zero. And that's exactly the two vectors that we just calculated here. And we also saw another interesting thing, which is that actually t times any of these vectors, so if you, mu if you scale and multiply any of these vectors, uh, you get another such vector. So these vectors here give you uh, another example of an eigenvector corresponding to the relevant eigenvalue. Okay, so this is just the introduction to the, the problem, to state the problem, and um, we'll be developing this a lot further in what follows. Thank you.